At two days old, we heard an innocent murmur. The innocent murmur turned out to be critical congenital heart disease. Um, our baby was in heart failure at two days old, and we didn't know it. We're now able to use a very simple, cost-effective, um, completely pain-free tool to evaluate babies for hidden heart defects. It's by far the most prevalent birth defect. We've long needed an extra screening tool for this disease, and now we have one. We have something that can catch this number uh, of um, heart problems in the newborn nursery. It's a beautiful, beautiful tool. There are some severe forms of congenital heart disease that can be difficult to diagnose in the first few days of life. And using a screening technique like pulse oximetry, which is painless, comfortable for the infant, rapid and inexpensive, can help us detect those forms of congenital heart disease before they become symptomatic. Um, I think it's something that we um, can do very easily for our children to improve their health and make um, the newborn period safer for all babies. can't tell a child has this by looking at them and oftentimes they actually look perfectly healthy at birth. They look beautiful, they have great APCAR scores, um, they're crying, they may be discharged to home at a normal schedule uh, and then things go wrong. They can get really sick really fast. They can go into what we call shock where blood isn't flowing to the different parts of their body. Um, they can become what we call cyanotic where their body isn't getting enough oxygen and they turn blue. Um, so it's really scary and it can go from not life-threatening to life-threatening in a matter of hours. And it's important to have that check before they leave the hospital for us to look and make sure that, uh, you know, if there is something wrong, we know about it. And we know about it as quickly as possible. About a third of the infants with congenital heart disease have very serious forms of congenital heart disease that require intervention as a newborn to prevent um, very serious consequences and we call those critical congenital heart disease and with those babies we can intervene um, appropriately and really improve their outcomes and um, the long-term outlook for their lives. What we can do for babies with congenital heart disease is incredible, even compared to what it was 10 years ago or even five years ago. And that's really, you know, when we say we're gonna do a screening test, you wanna know that you're gonna be able to do something with that result that's gonna improve the health of that child. The pulse oximetry screening that we do is done um, ideally when the baby is over 24 hours of age, but certainly um, right before discharge. Um, it's meant mostly for asymptomatic babies who are in the normal nursery and, and haven't had any other problems with their heart. Um, it's done with a light which detects the level of oxygen in the bloodstream. It's a very small probe that is wrapped around the baby's hand or foot. It's painless for the infant. Generally, we get a very accurate reading very rapidly. I'm coming in to do the um, test for the congenital heart defects. Okay. This is a screen that we do on all babies. To detect. Every family that um, I've worked with has been um, very happy to have this screen done on their baby. We screen babies at bedside because they're going to be most comfortable with the mom or dad. So the best place to do it would be having the mom holding the baby or in the bassinet in the room. We try to screen babies when they are calm and comfortable and not in too much of a deep sleep or moving around too much. The type of sensor we use is used on all babies. It doesn't matter what skin tone or color the baby is or whether or not they're jaundiced. It is still gonna give an accurate reading. But you want the baby's skin for the screening preferably to be warm and dry. If they're cold, the sensor may not pick up as well, and if it's wet, it may, the probe may not stick. For the screening, you should always use an appropriate size sensor and wrap. We screen babies using the right hand or either foot. We found that um, starting with the foot seems to be more helpful, because once you get up to the hand, babies tend to get a little more fussy and close their hand. 
So you want to start with either foot with the detector on the fleshy part and the emitter on top. You want to place it on the outer thinnest portion of the foot. For the hand, you want to do the same sort of placement. When placing the sensor on the skin, there should be no gaps between the sensor and the skin. It takes maybe three minutes, maybe five minutes if you have a fussy baby, but it's very quick and very simple. Technology for screening varies, but it is recommended that the motion tolerant pulse oximeters be used to achieve the highest accuracy in newborns. This protocol calls for either a reusable sensor or a disposable sensor. Either one is fine for the screening. If you are using reusable sensors, make sure you're cleaning them properly in between each use. So 97% is measurement of how much oxygen is in your baby's blood, which is a great number. A baby that is 95% or greater is an automatic pass. If a baby gets a reading between 90 and 94%, we repeat their procedure in an hour. If, again, they are between 90 and 94%, we repeat it in another hour. If they fail at that point, then um, we notify the primary care provider. Any baby who is 90% or less automatically fails and we notify the primary care provider at that point. If there is a three-point differential between either extremity, that would call for a repeat also. Parents are very reassured for taking their baby home and that their baby has been screened to be healthy. You don't know that something couldn't go haywire still at home and we hope that it doesn't, but at least we've gotten the screen, it's not a diagnostic tool. And that's something that we have to be careful to share with parents. Nurses are very happy to be able to offer the screening to our families and that they know that they've offered one more thing to our families to make sure that their babies are going home to a safe environment. They know that they're making a difference and a great contribution to our families that we take care of in our hospitals. That's the beauty of, of a universal screening program is that every child has the same opportunity for the same level of health care. And for those children who have abnormal or positive screens that they're quickly getting into a diagnostic setting. Uh, and that can be difficult and that'll be a big role for the state health departments in CCHD screening. That's where a big focus should be is that follow-up. I think our story is, uh, is very neat and I think it illustrates a few things. The importance of building the collaborations with different specialists and your, and your stakeholders but also how screening is completely advocate driven and it has been since 1960s and it's kind of a cool, cool story. We've got 40,000 kids a year being diagnosed with congenital heart disease babies, you know, and um, we're losing 4,000 of them. And that number, that sort of 10%, just hasn't changed in a long time. And if we've got one simple thing that we can do, there's no reason not to do it. I, my daughter is a testament to that. I mean, just today, she had a routine checkup. She is a precocious, active, overactive three-year-old that just goes in for routine cardiology visits and thanks to early detection of her heart defect, she was able to get the right cardiac care, the right surgical intervention, and, and will lead a beautiful life. Thank you.